So here we are at question 10, the final question on our chemistry exam paper for 2018. So um, question 10 technically, oh, generally is a show me what you know type of question. Basically they give you a bit of a prompt and then they give you all these lines to show you everything you need to know about the particular stuff up here. Now what's interesting about that is when you look at this you go, well I could write a lot of stuff here but it's only worth seven marks. And this particular area here, question A, is only worth four marks. So whilst you get all this area here, this is more or less to plan out your answer. Um, let's have a look at what this question is actually asking us about. So, a group of travellers exploring blah 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 blah, they during their journey they arrive at an island where there's abundant supply of coconuts. Coconuts are made up of a significant portion of the standard diet for some people living near the equator. Coconut oil, the source of triglycerides, so we're talking about triglycerides. Demonstrate your understanding of the chemistry of the metabolism of fats and oils in the human body. In your answer, explain or show the structure of triglycerides and identify the types of reactions involved. So all this space here is what you, all you need to do is show me the structure of a triglyceride, then write what happens in terms of chemical reactions. And it's only worth four marks. So although you have a large amount of space, it's not, nothing to really worry about. As always, with four mark questions, I'm gonna put out and start to structure my answer with dot points. So I'm gonna put a few dot points here. And rather than writing a paragraph or a um, thing, I'm just gonna basically answer my question in small areas. The first thing I'm gonna answer is the structure of a triglyceride. So therefore, I'm gonna start off with um, drawing what a triglyceride will look like, which is my glycerol backbone here. And I've got my three esters, like this. And then I've got um, my R group. So I've got my, my basically the rest of my fatty acid. So therefore here, I'm gonna say this is a structure of my triglyceride, where I have in this part here, I'm gonna identify the important things. So the ester functional group, I have my glycerol region, region, and this part here, I'm gonna call that my fatty acid chain chain because I need to identify the fact that I know the structure of triglycerides so I'm going to draw it then I'm going to label what the parts are and hopefully that's enough for at least one mark if not two of this question the second thing is what are the types of reactions involved so what is actually going to happen here we are starting off when we digest a fat and oil we're going to undergo um, so I'm going to say fats under go hydrolysis, hydrolysis, okay? Undergo hydrolysis with, and my reaction needs to have um, everything a reaction should. So it should have uh, my products and reactants with three water molecules. So I might show this the fact that I have my tri, tri glyceride plus three H2O, and that's gonna form my glycerol plus um, three fatty acids. That's the reaction that's gonna happen when fats undergo metabolism. Secondly here, I'm gonna say what happens after they undergo metabolism? Well, some fats are used for energy and they're gonna undergo basically what's a oxidation reaction, like a combustion reaction to get energy. So some fats, fats undergo, um, we call it respiration, it's not respiration, but let's just say, um, sorry, I'll say are used for energy. And that's where we might say a triglyceride of, um, sorry, a fatty acid. Fatty acid will react with oxygen to form CO2 and H2O. That's a really broad idea of what's happening here, but we'll call it that this is something that will happen and this is how we're gonna get energy from our, our fat. Basically, it's gonna be used for energy under the basic site idea of a combustion reaction. Um, but that's gonna happen inside your body, obviously. Some fats are rejoined together, so some, some fats will then 
will also undergo condensation reactions to rejoin and form protective tissue because that's what fats do. They are used for protection and, I guess, cushioning in a way. Um, and what's going to happen here? And they go fatty acids plus, or three fatty acids, plus a glycerol, and that's going to form, um, what's it going to be called? A tri um, glyceride. So try, so I, what am I doing Y's for? I think I've done it a couple of times here. I don't know why there is uh, glyceride, that's fine. Triglyceride. Just make sure I'm writing in the right area here. Triglyceride plus um, three H2O. So therefore, I've highlighted the fact that we've got the structures, we've got the reactions involved. Now what else is interesting about these um, reactions. These en these are enzyme catalyzed reactions because they're in your body. So I might then also write the fact that these use enzymes and this here uses an enzyme as well um, to undergo these reactions. I just thought of one other thing that happens with fats and oils in the metabolism range is the fact that first bile is used to actually um, I guess disperse fat globulates into smaller particles. So I'm going to say um, also that bile is used to um, break up large um, bits of fat to create more surface area to undergo digestion. So I think that's probably going to be enough to get me my four marks. I've written a fair bit there, I've spent probably longer than I should for a four mark question, but because this is an explain everything you know style question, I'm just going to try and put dot points there and then again write to those dot points as to everything I know about a particular topic. Um, and because this topic was the metabolism of foods, or fats and oils in particular, um, I pretty much wrote everything I knew about that topic, which is what these questions are. It's basically, tell me what you know. Brain dump your information here. Um, and then hopefully you'll get some marks for it. Part B, let's have a look at part B. Um, Part B is only worth three marks, and again, you've got a large section of lines to write for, but it's still only worth three marks. So let's dot point out three things relatively evenly spaced on there, so we can then write to those dot points. Coconuts contain about 15% carbohydrates by weight. Uh, coconut is cut in half. Half of the cut is cut into large pieces. The other half is shredded into thin pieces, so we're looking at surface area. So um, small pieces versus large pieces. You can think about this as rate of reaction, all right, or um, surface area based stuff. Compare the glycemic index of the large pieces of coconut and the shredded pieces of coconut. All right, and identify which of these two forms of coconut has the lower GI. Okay, dokie, and explain why. So this is a pretty clear um, question in terms of what's going on. First of all, we need to, um, okay, Compare the GI. So what is GI? So GI equals the um, time it takes for glucose to enter the blood stream, pretty much, all right? So um, I guess and increase blood sugar levels. So I'm going to first of all identify what GI actually is because I haven't actually explained it here. All right, so then we're going to talk about what we know about these two forms of um, stuff. So again, we've talked about large pieces and small pieces that reeks of rates of reaction. So we know that small pieces will react faster. So I'm going to say small um, pieces will have 
a larger surface area thus will react and release glucose faster than the large pieces. All right, so I've quickly looked at what's gonna to happen to these things and basically explained it. I haven't thought about GI just yet. I've basically said, what do I know about large and small pieces? It's about rate of reaction. So that tells me that large pieces will react slower, small pieces will react faster because of the surface area. Then I can then say, um, as the small pieces release glucose faster, they will have a higher GI um, index, sorry, glycemic index index, GI value. And that should be enough for our three marks there, based upon the fact that our large pieces will react slowly, therefore release glucose at a more slower rate um, than our small pieces, which we digested quickly, releasing glucose, which brings a spike in blood sugar levels quickly to the person who is eating it. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's enough for three marks. Um, and that will be the end of our... 2018 chemistry exam.